Andrew Crystal with you. This is Sirius XM. You're listening to Crystal Nation on Channel 167. My next guest is John Morgan. He's a private, independent day trader from his home office in Yankton, South Dakota. He trades futures, Forex, and cryptocurrencies, and he is ForexLens.com's live trader and educator, where he trades live Monday to Friday with ForexLens.com subscribers. Morgan is one of Quora.com's most viewed writers in many of the trading categories, a live trader and educator. I like your stuff on ForexLens.com. John Morgan, thank you for joining me from South Dakota. Thank you for having me, Andrew. It's okay, good to brother. Back. We just uh, got off the horn uh, with the Washington Post, uh, Dave Clark, who's the deputy White House editor there. And we're talking about all of the uh, convulsions in America. They're happening socially. They're happening politically. They're happening economically. Uh, the trade war that Trump is initiating with China with the tariffs are seeing uh, even more volatility in what was already a volatile uh, moneyed landscape. So how does this affect what you do? How does this affect what Americans should be doing or looking at when it comes to their wallets, sir? Well, from a trading perspective, uh, uh, I love all the volatility. That's that's something that we enjoy. Um, you know, it's how do you... B-bird. By- you b- <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just part of uh it's part of uh what, what we do uh the trade war issue is is there's two ways that you can look at how all this plays out as a trader you either you either look at it from uh that, that price action is random or you or you view price action as something that's in a set pattern and that's what i do so I, I operate my trading on the belief that that humans are unable to change a predetermined trend and that that no matter what the news is it's uh, that, that that has no effect on the trend uh it's just uh it's just news actually reacts to time as opposed to you news me creating up. creating the incident sorry about that i'm just wondering if i uh should have be beeped out there with some of my language sure. so you know why they have a delay on the station because of my language not because of guests uh <laughs> john how do you think these tariffs are gonna how is it all gonna pan out I mean, I don't know if there's. Are bad. I don't know if there is an actual economic strategy. I mean, the Chinese are actually saying we don't know what Trump wants because he's looking at uh, deficits, trade deficits, as a ledger sheet, and they're not. Trading deficits well, is not a ledger sheet. It's not a zero sum game. Zero no, sum no, game. No, zero sum gains. One person wins and one person loses. That's the definition of zero sum gain. Uh, Right, that, that's, that's what people say about the market, too, uh, Yeah, and well, that's not true. Because you can have a trade deficit with a nation, but there could be all a bunch of other arrangements with, which benefits your country and workers, right? Exactly. So, yeah, so we've seen that with manufacturing uh, internationalized. But one of the problems that Trump has correctly with free trade, free trade was never supposed to be, I can set up a factory in Mexico to exploit a cheaper labor market and sell these products back to Americans. That wasn't the way, that's not the, that wasn't the spirit of free trade. It wasn't supposed to be a workaround to screw laborers in America. No. But, nope, it, it was not. Nope. And, and free trade is, uh, that's, a, that's a broad term, but, uh, uh, you know, tariffs always hurt the nation that initiates the tariffs. Um, the, the country that has the trade deficit is the beneficiary of of that of that of the trade? Uh, I know that sounds weird, and that's that's hard for people to wrap their heads around. It's like, well, if we have a trade deficit, isn't that bad? I said, no, actually, you're you're benefiting from the fr- from that. So it's it, it, you could spend a whole session going over tariffs and why they're bad. I mean, it's just it's economics one one that tariffs are never good; they're always bad. Now, now there's some argument for putting tariffs on things that are of a significant to national defense. Uh, some people would say steel is like that, but those are, those are kind of different, but for the most part, tariffs are all bad. They're, they're kind of pointless. NAFTA was working per- fine. I mean, was it perfect? No. Could it have been re- negotiate some things? Sure. But there's no, there's no reason just to cut the whole thing out. <laughs> like just cutting it off so fast is just, it's just silly. What are people, 
your confederates, the, some of the folks you speak to in the markets, maybe some of the writers, what are people that surround you, John Morgan, saying about where this is going with NAFTA? NAFTA, more than likely, yeah, things are going to go back to the status quo. Uh, Mexico and Canada are our two largest trading partners. They're our neighbors. I, have, I see no reason why we would spend any time trying to dick over the people that live right next door to us. I, I just it, th- That boggles my mind. I, I, I don't understand that. Uh, I don't remember the last time I heard somebody say something like, oh, Canada's got uh, uh, trade problems with us in the U.S. Since when? We have a trade deficit with America, right? America is Yeah, a- that's the other point. You guys have a deficit with us. So if you're going to operate on a trade deficit as a ledger sheet, which is a, a wrong predicate, that premise is not right. Uh, exactly. You know, but from Trump's orientation, you know, we're uh, he's got a winner with us. As I speak to you from Toronto, yeah. you in South Dakota. Okay, let's talk about uh, sectors that might benefit Americans. I don't know if you're listening to me now and where you're listening to me, whether it's uh, Halifax or Las Vegas. But I don't know if you play the markets or not but certainly some of your investments are. Uh, Where should Americans place their money, or where are some growth sectors? Um, And let's talk about oil and gas right now. Well, oil and gas are always going to be subject to a lot of of manipulated supply situations. Uh, Oil is about – I used to trade oil futures uh, early early in my career, and uh, I don't touch it anymore. I I don't have the skin for it. It's It's a pretty volatile uh, commodity, but where, as far as money goes, I mean, there's a there, there's a there's a price there, there's a, a crash cycle uh, that that comes up and it starts later on in in uh, in late 2019 to mid 2020. There is a panic phase that starts the beginning of a panic phase where the markets are going to have some type of a major corrective or even crash uh, uh, version, not sound the alarm, but this is just like the phase of markets. They go through these things. And, uh, you know, where do you put money to keep it safe? That is always up for debate. Honestly, cryptocurrencies, there's been a lot of flight of capital into traditional risk, uh, risk off assets like gold and a lot of money that is going into cryptocurrencies because they are, well, I, I know from a security standpoint and, and a safety standpoint, gold on paper does you nothing in case there's some type of worldwide apocalypse. You're not going to be able to do anything with gold on paper. Even if you have gold physically, you're just holding on to it for the next guy to come and take it from you. But cryptocurrencies, you can take those anywhere with you. You don't actually have to carry them on you. And that, that's a much more uh, – it, it's easier to transfer. It's, it's easier to buy and sell it. Uh, you know, cryptocurrencies are – are becoming more and more of a source of value. They're becoming more and more legitimized. Uh, it, they're not going away anytime soon. Um, those are a brand new separate, if you want to consider them an asset class, that's, that's you could call it an asset class, but cryptocurrencies are, are going to be a, a, a very important uh, instrument for finding value and security. You see all those commercials on CNN, because I watch CNN, Fox, I read the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, et cetera, Financial Times. And I see all these ads for gold, buy gold, buy silver. Uh, is that yeah. B, is that BS? It is. Yeah. Uh, typically, when you hear ads, I remember back in you know 2008, they're like, "Oh, buy gold, buy gold." Uh, they want to sell you gold at a high price. But the the thing is, is right now gold is actually trading at a a bit of a a discount. Gold's movement has actually been really funky because we've had the dollar. Uh, uh, rise at times along with gold rising, but gold's been, uh, it's taken a big old crapper <laughs> for the last couple weeks or so. Actually, ever since probably uh, we go all the way back into April 11th, we've gone from 1360 all the way down to where we're currently at at 1250, 29. So we've had a big drop in gold, and uh, gold may be considered for some commodity traders and some investors to be a good entry area. Um, because we are we are approaching the exact mid level price for the entire history of of gold's uh, 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 according to my charting software we're approaching the exact middle uh, price level so it's it's trading pretty low compared to what it has been before. But yet st- people will still buy gold and silver because it's you know it's you can touch it it's very tactile it's shiny. Yep. Yeah, I mean. 
gold is gold is I, I buy my own metals, but I buy the actual bullion. I I buy physical metals because those are worth something. So they, you, you have a safe, you keep them in a safe, John Morgan, along with your canned goods and your apocalypse uh, shelter. <laughs> I, I keep I keep them uh, hidden. Yeah, I, I keep them hidden. Yep, it's, they're not uh, out there. You know, if, if 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 there is some type of like zombie apocalypse, I'm not. I don't know what I'm going to do with my gold. Am I going to walk over to the Shell gas station and they're going to split it up like a piece of eight from a pirate ship? No, silver is silver is a lot more. Yeah, that, that that's it's cheaper and you can use it a lot easier as a, as, a, as a basis of trade if you're trading just you know pure metals. But uh, um. Yeah, it's it's uh, metals are always going to be a source of security, and and people should always have your 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 retirement and investment advisor. So, uh, John Morgan. Okay, so uh, you've got me all excited, right? I I might even my wife and I might even try watching The Walking Dead. We didn't get into the series, so let's say there's a zombie apocalypse, okay, or a massive uh, nuclear war between India and Pakistan, uh, which throws nuclear radiation and dust clouds up, mass starvation, mm-hmm. crop failure, or a war between USA and China or nuclear terrorism. So we have the zombie apocalypse, all right? I want to know what's in your basement. Do you have firearms? John Morgan, thank you so much. I appreciate you joining us. I appreciate your time. John Morgan, private independent day trader, spoke to us from his home office in Yankton, South Dakota. He trades fut- futures and is forexlens.com's live trader. Back with more right here on Crystal Nation on Sirius XM 167. I'm Cameron Dupuis. I'm 22, and because of the College of Carpenters, I was able to buy my first house just over a year ago, and I'm pretty well debt-free otherwise, other than the mortgage. The College of Carpenters gave me a head start on life. A lot of people come out of high school or come out of college with debt, whereas I got to learn through them and be paid for it as well. The College of Carpenters and Allied Trades, building success through real-world learning. I'm Cameron Dupuis, and the College of Carpenters changed my life. Join us at the CCAT.com. CCAT.ca. CCAT.ca. CCAT.ca.